Good morning, AFBC Church family. It's Sunday morning, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I am so excited about the word God has for us on today. So do me a favor. Just like we do every Sunday, let your neighbors, your coworkers, your family, your crazy cousin, let them know that AFBC is on the air. We're going to do just like we've done since this whole pandemic began. The church doors may be closed, but we are still going to have church. So we're going to have a brief prayer. After that, the praise and worship team is going to come. We're going to have some announcements. We're going to have our special graduation ceremony, and then we're going to take up our offering, and after that, the Word of God. So listen, go ahead and get your notepad, your Bible, get ready, because we are going to have an extraordinary time today in worship. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, first of all, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be here one more time. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up and starting us on our way. So come into this place, Father God, and allow us to have extraordinary worship. Allow us to have a great time in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. slipping away. The economy's down. People don't get enough pay. But as for me, just can't beat muggers and robbers no place seems to be safe but you've been my protection every step of the way and I want to say thank you Lord for all you've done for me hey it could have been me thank you. I'm I want to see. 
Good morning, Apex family. These are your weekly announcements. Join Pastor and First Lady McLean for our weekly connection call on Fridays at 7.30 a.m. The dial-in number is 425-436-6379 and the access code is 355-445. Apex family, thank you for your attention. These have been your weekly announcements. So in addition to the announcements that you just heard, I just have a few things that we want to just add to, uh, to our announcements for you to remember. So first of all, we just want to say thank you from First Lady and I and Imari and the entire First Family. We just want to say thank you for the awesome celebration on yesterday. You made us feel so special. And thank you for all of you that showed up on the Zoom, all of you that thought it not robbery to show up in person, and for all of the gifts. I wish there was some way we could thank each and every one of you individually. But before we miss somebody and make a mistake and not call one name, we just want to say collectively from our family, from our hearts to yours, Thank you so much for everything that occurred on yesterday. It really blessed us, and it meant the world to us. Amen? And so thank you again. Don't forget, we're coming back to church. Amen. We're coming back to in-person worship. August the 1st, that's the first Sunday in August, there'll be two services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Now, things are going to look a little bit different. You have to register. You got to make sure that we know you're coming. Yes, you're still going to be wearing your mask. Yes, we're still going to be social distancing, and we're still going to make sure we're sanitizing and washing our hands, at least for the foreseeable future or until we're sure that the protocol we have in place is working. Also, in addition to that, things will look a little bit different inside the church as well. We're going to make sure we maintain space. When you get here, your communion will already be waiting for you at the back of the seat. We won't take up a physical offering. What we'll do is you'll give virtually like you have every Sunday, like you'll do today, or you can give your offering when you're coming in the church or when you're leaving. So don't worry though. If you didn't get all of that, we're going to be doing a PSA real soon. You're going to be getting alerts very often through your emails, and we're going to make sure through our social media platforms that you are aware of how things will operate once we come back to church. That's the good news. We're coming back to church. Now, if you still don't feel comfortable, you still feel like things are not where you need them to be before you come back, don't worry. Everything will still remain virtual. All of our services, Bible study, Sunday school, uh, uh, anything we do with the youth, all will remain virtual. So you can sit at home and watch it, or you can come to church and see it in person. Don't worry, we got you covered. Amen? Amen. Now, we got a special treat for you this year. 2020 was a crazy year, and a lot of school systems, a lot of uh, universities, colleges did not get a chance for their graduates to walk, but we did. We did it right in the parking lot, and we were so proud of our graduates, and so we did a drive-through graduation, and we honored them for their amazing accomplishment. Well, we wanted to do the same thing this year. Because the doors are closed, doesn't mean we're not proud of our AFBC youth and for their accomplishments. So, join Join me as we celebrate our 2021 Apex First Baptist graduates. Yep, that's it. Pastor, Youth Pastor Clark, First Lady, and our Church Secretary, Sister Bird, and I want to honor you this morning. So watch this. AFBC family, we are so excited. We are here this morning to celebrate our 2021 graduates. So come on, join me wherever you are and congratulating our 2021 graduates from Apex First Baptist Church. Starting with elementary school, we're going to have Miss Aria Alexander, who graduated from Cardinal Charter Academy. Trustee Austin is in our place. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. We have Miss Maia Baker from Salem Elementary School. Maia Baker. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ms. Baker. We have Ms. Maya Beverly. Maya Beverly. Holly Ridge Elementary. Holly Ridge Elementary. 
Congratulations, Maya. Amen. Congratulations. We have Miss Alasia Cofield from Apex Elementary. Apex Elementary, Alasia Cofield. Congratulations. Amen. Congratulations, Ms. Cofield. And finally, we have Mr. Ryan McCollars from Herbert Atkins Elementary going to middle school. Ryan. Congratulations, Ryan. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now we will have our middle school graduates. First, we have Mr. Braxton Baker from Harnett Central Middle School. Braxton Baker. Excuse me, Salem Middle School. Headed to the ninth grade. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Next, we'll have Mr. Jared Jones from Burner Stem Middle School. Jared Jones, Butner Stem. Uh huh. Congratulations, Mother Jones. Amen. And lastly, we'll have Ms. Zaya Nickens from Harness Central Middle School going to the ninth grade. Ninth grade. Who would have thought? Congratulations, Zaya. Amen. Amen. And now we have our high school graduates. First, we'll have Mr. Kenneth Baker from Tar Heel Challenge Academy. Tar Heel Challenge Academy. Amen. Congratulations, Brother Baker. Next, we'll have Mr. Tyler Gilbert from Apex High School. Tyler Gilbert, Apex High School. Amen. Congratulations, Brother Gilbert. And lastly, for our high school graduates, we have Mr. Thomas Harris from Holly Springs High School. Brother Harris, congratulations. Amen, congratulations. And graduating with her masters from NC State University, we have our very own Amari McLean. Yes. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Let's give it up for our graduates. Come on. Let's give it up one more time for all of our 2021 Apex First Baptist Church graduates. We are so proud of you. We are so, so, so proud of you. Amen. Amen. It's time to give. It's time to give. Listen, I am so excited. We have had our best year of giving since this pandemic began. And I just want to personally thank all of you from the leadership of AFBC to you. Thank you for your continued giving. We fed over 20,000 people in 2020. We did over 3,000 vaccinations in 2021. We um, did about uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 uh, COVID-19 tests right there in our parking lot. And we were able to do all of that through your giving. So if you would, let's go ahead and give right now. There are four ways you can do it. You can still come to the church for the next 30 minutes and give your tithes and your offerings in person. Or you can mail them to Apex First Baptist Church. That's Apex First Baptist Church, P.O. Box 64, Apex, North Carolina, 27502. Apex, North Carolina, 
P.O. Box 64, Apex, North Carolina, 27502. Or you can go on our website. It's real simple, apexfpc.org forward slash give, and you can give your tithes and your offering right there. Or if you would, consider giving to our Count Me In campaign. You can do all of that right there on our website, apexfpc.org forward slash give. Or finally, you can give right now with your phone. As a matter of fact, why don't you pick it up? It's real simple. Just text Apex first all one word, to 73256. That's Apex First, all one word, to 73256. Uh, you can do that right now. As a matter of fact, why don't you do it? You can give it right now. Amen? And I believe in God, that God is going to give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Well, it's preaching time. It's preaching time, and I'm so excited to have uh, my youngest son in the ministry here to preach for us this morning. But before you do that, let me just introduce our speaker for today, our youth pastor, our very own Asa Clark. He's done a wonderful job through this pandemic. We're so proud of him. But what some of you may not know is that Asa is now a member of the Duke University Divinity School. He starts classes in August, and so please make sure you pray with him. He's seeking his Master of Divinity degree, and we're just so proud of him and could not be prouder. And so after our praise team has come for another selection, Join me in welcoming for our word this morning, none other than our very own youth pastor, Minister Asa Clark. It belongs to me. Salvation belongs to me. And I have everything to make salvation complete. I know the work's already done by the power of His blood. I know it's mine. It belongs to me.
Thank you, Pastor Frankie. I appreciate your kind words. Who had fun? I hope some of you all were able to come out yesterday and be able to just serve and honor our great pastor, Pastor Frankie McLean, for his second pastoral anniversary. We're so gracious and we're so grateful to be have uh, to have such a great leader. Again, I know y'all are going crazy in the comments, but one more time, let's honor Pastor Frankie, First Lady McLean, and even our first family, Amari and Kier. We love them so, 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 so much. We thank the Lord, and as any time I get behind this uh, pulpit, I'm just excited and I'm grateful and I'm humbled to be able to be here. So, of course, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, we're grateful for that and for him to just give me this opportunity. Again, blessing our pastor and first lady. I'm excited to be in front of you all. And one more thing, I want to be able to bless and honor our graduates. Thank you and congratulations to so many of the graduates, whether it was from elementary school, middle school, high school, or all the way our master's program. My sister Amari had graduated. So we thank and we honor each and every one of you all. I am excited to have this word and to be able to preach this word to you. So I won't be before you too long. I want to go to Judges chapter 2, verse 20. Judges chapter 2, verse 20. And I'll be reading up until Judges chapter 3, verse 2. Judges chapter 2, verse 20. And then I'll be reading from chapter 3 up or up until chapter 3, verse 2. And the Bible declares in the New International Version, It says, therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and said, because this nation has violated the covenant I ordained for their ancestors and has not listened to me, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations Joshua left when he died. Verse 22 says, I will use them to test Israel and see whether they will keep the way of the Lord and walk in it as their ancestors did. The Lord had allowed those nations to remain. He did not drive them out at once by giving them into the hands of Joshua. Chapter 3 verse 1 declares, these are the nations the Lord left to test all those Israelites who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience. I'll read this last verse one more time. Verse 2 declares, he did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience. In the few moments that I have this morning, I'm excited. I want to be able to preach to you all from the simple subject, the battle of promotion the battle of promotion. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Lord, we thank you. We honor you, Lord. We, we call you Abba. We thank you for doing so many great things. But Lord, we just bless you for who you are. Now, Lord, I just ask that you move Asa out of the way. Your word says that you must become greater and I must become less. So, God, I just ask that you purify my mouth, purify my heart, Lord God, so that I can preach this thing, Lord God, because I couldn't preach it like you anyhow. Lord, I can't exegete the text. Lord, I can't uh, decipher these things. I can't even communicate effectively without you. So, Lord, just have your way. Throw your weight around in this place, Lord God, and we ask that lives will be changed and hearts will be turned towards you. We love you. We bless you and we thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. The battle, the battle of promotion. Ladies and gentlemen, saints and friends, boys and girls of all ages, uh, as we're celebrating these graduates today, I uh, recollected and was remembered and uh, reminded of seven years ago. Seven years ago, I graduated from high school. It seems like so long ago. Literally, it seems like decades ago, literally. But I was excited and I thought about some of the things because I was excited about transition. Everybody loves to be able to transition from one place 
to the next place. Everybody loves to be able to go from one place to the next. And I was excited like so many of the high school graduates because I said, I'm going to be able to leave from where I'm at to be able to go to college and to begin to chase my dreams. I took a slightly different route because I didn't do certain things like I should have in high school. I was going to junior college and I was excited about those things because I wanted to chase my dream of eventually being able to play D1 basketball. I knew I had my plans worked out and I was excited. The first two weeks go by and I'm talking about Pastor Frankie. I had the time of my life. I said, I am in a new season. Y'all know how it goes when you're in a new season. You see, the thing about being in a, a new place, Pastor Frankie, is it gets me because sometimes we get it so excited that we're in a new season or we're, we've transitioned from one place to the next that sometimes we don't even know whether it's better th than the last season we were in. We're just excited that it's not what we were dealing with. Come on, somebody. Y'all know how it goes. You don't even know if the relationship is a better relationship. You just know that this relationship doesn't have the same problems that you were having before. Y'all not talking to me. Understand that y'all know how it goes. Sometimes you don't even know if the church is a better church, but you're just excited because it doesn't have the same deacons or the same trustees. I'm not talking about Apex. I'm talking about whoever y'all uh, were, were with. But understand, we get excited about seasons of transition. We get excited when we know we're going from this place to the next. And I found myself so excited, Pastor, because I knew that things were going to be different. And the first two weeks were great. I enjoyed myself. I literally was uh, uh, had this new zeal to be able to serve the Lord, and I began to pray. And I was praying every morning before I woke, uh, before I, I went to school. And I said, "This is going to be different than where I was. This is going to be different. I can feel. You know how you get so close to something, and you're so close to a new level that you can literally feel it. I could feel us transitioning." into a new place. And two weeks into it, September 5th, 2014, I was excited and I was getting ready for basketball practice and I knew that we were going to have practice that day. It was going to be a long day. And I woke up to 14 missed calls, Pastor Frankie, from my sister and my father. And what happened was I, I woke up to these calls saying that my mother had had a stroke the night before and I needed to hurry up and get to Durham, North Carolina. I was in Raleigh at the time and I found myself so uh, 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 in, in a season of ambiguity because I was confused because I knew that I was supposed to be transitioning from one place to the next. But what I didn't understand was that why in the world was everything feeling so good, but now it looked like I had the biggest battle of my life. You see, that's the thing that happens sometimes, church, when we follow God. Oftentimes when we follow God, doesn't it seem like sometimes God doesn't always put the fine print in what happens? God will promise you something and he'll tell you that you'll be the lender and not the borrower. He'll tell you that you will be the head and not the tail. But sometimes it seems as though he doesn't put in the parts that tells you that you're going to have to deal and you're going to have to struggle with some of the hardest seasons of your life. And I find myself in a very similar position. I find myself in a very similar position of Israel in this place. Understand we're in the book of Judges. We're in Judges right now. And understand if you know anything about Judges, remember that these individuals were the saviors and they were the deliverers of Israel. Remember that Israel had just started this uh, sick, this toxic, cyclical uh, uh, place where they were oftentimes honoring and they were worshiping other idols. So they began to stray away from the Lord, but they began to stray away. Uh, who am I talking to that sometimes just has moments and seasons of their own life that they feel as though they just begin to waver and stray a tad bit from what the Lord has said. Understand Israel was also in a weird and a very crazy place because now, although they're about to have judges realize they just lost and they are still dealing with the loss of Joshua. Come on, y'all know Joshua. Yeah, yeah, Joshua, y'all remember he was the servant and he was a commander of the army of the Lord and he was a servant of Moses. Remember that these individuals never even knew who Moses was. Moses was what we would call the goat in this day and age. Moses was the guy. And then after Moses uh, dies and he ascends, then we see the ascension of Joshua. And now we're excited because Joshua has been doing so many great things. Joshua has literally led them into the promised land. Joshua is the fulfillment of what Moses said. Saul, and now we even see that Joshua has died, and now the Israelites seem to be all on their own. It gets me because we're, we're talking about the battle of promotion, church, but it gets me because it, you would think that when you get promoted, you shouldn't also have to deal with a battle. 
Doesn't it blow your mind that sometimes it seems as though as soon as God takes you into one place and you go from this place to the next, that it seems as though sometimes there's a battle on the other side. And I got three little quick points and little uh, life application points that I want to be able to give you. And I pray that they bless you. But understand that the first thing that I want you to understand is that in order to embrace the promise, you have to be able to endure preparation. Okay. Okay. Again, I'll say it again. In order to embrace the promise, you must endure preparation. Watch this. Verse 22 says it like this. It says, I will use them to test Israel and see whether they will keep the way of the Lord and walk in it as their ancestors did. I will use them. This is God talking. He says, I will use them, the enemies, to test Israel. Israel. Now, now I, I tried to do my due diligence. Uh, Pastor talked about how I'm going to Duke and I was trying to get ready. So I was reading in the Hebrew, Pastor Frankie, about what this word test means. And you see this, this, this version and this uh, uh, use of the word test is a Hebrew word that means Nassau, N-A-S-A-H, Nassau. And it literally means to try, to tempt, or to prove. Nassau means to try, to tempt, uh, or to prove. So watch this. He says, I will use their enemies to try, to tempt, and to prove Israel. Can I, can I, can I, can I tell you something? First off, this one little nugget that I have for you. Understand this now. The presence of enemies does not always mean the absence of God. Okay, okay, y'all didn't hear me. Y'all was texting. Y'all, was, uh, y'all weren't paying attention. Watch this now. The presence of your enemies does not always mean the absence of God. Understand, the Bible literally says that God used their enemies to begin to test, to try, to tempt, and to prove Israel. Now, you see, that's the thing that gets me because oftentimes, church, we'll have an issue because we're saying, God, why am I dealing with some of the enemies? Why am I dealing with some of the adversaries? And we start praying to God and acting as though God had no idea. But if God is omnipresent, if God is omniscient, if God was able to create in uh, the heavens, the moon, and the stars, if God was able to separate uh, 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 one light and call it sun, and if he was able to separate the other light and begin to call it night, why in the world would God not be able to not only know that your enemies were there, but why would he not know how to use them? You see, the issue that I've realized we have, Deacon McKinney, with our promises is that all Oftentimes, we like having the promises of God, but we don't want to deal with the preparation of God. We've gotten into this new uh, season where we get so excited. We don't mind uh, the prophecies. We don't mind finding out that we're going to be in a new relationship. We don't mind finding out that we're going to get all of our loans paid off. We don't mind finding out the thing that our mortgage and that loans will be approved. We don't mind finding out certain things, but we begin to struggle when we find ourselves in a season of preparation. What I realized was what kind of Christians would we be? What kind of place would the church be if we would begin to accept and better realize and better understand the preparation of God instead of just the promises of God? Watch this after because after you walk into any promise of the Lord, what I've learned, Deacon McKinney, is that the next thing God will do is he will test you. After you walk into any promise of the Lord, the next thing God will do is he will literally test you. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Uh, uh, y'all, know, y'all, know, y'all know Abraham, right? Y'all remember when Abraham, Pastor Frank Abraham, literally he gets this word that he's supposed to have a baby. He's supposed to have a baby in his old age with his wife, Sarah, so much so that he didn't even believe the Lord because he says, I'm not going to be able to have a baby at this time. He calls the baby laughter. He says that he laughs and he laughed in the face of God because he did not believe it. Uh, uh, you fast forward a little bit and now we see that uh, Abraham was able to have this baby with Sarah. He has this baby Isaac and the first thing that God does, you would think that he would enjoy his fatherhood. You would think that he would begin to talk about his inheritance, that he was going to leave Isaac. You would think that he was going to talk about the way that Isaac or that uh, Abraham and Sarah were going to be able to minister and we're going to be able to parent this child. But no, the first thing that God does is God tells uh, Abraham, I need you to take this child and I need you to go up the mountain and sacrifice because what I've learned oftentimes church is what God will do is God although he'll give you a promise and although he will fulfill everything that he said what he will do oftentimes is he will make sure he challenges you and he will begin to tempt you to see if you are more committed to the thing that he promised you or if you are more committed to God I let me pinpoint my sermon for half a second now, can we talk about your life for a moment how many moments have we had church where we've been more 
focused on what God said that we forgot the person that promised it. We've been so focused on God's hand and what God can provide for us and what God can do for us and what God has said that he would do that we forgot that as long as we get into the presence of the Lord, it doesn't matter what God can do for me. As long as I'm in his presence, I'll have all of those things. Mm. Okay, that still wasn't good enough for you. Okay, uh, uh, come here, David. Y'all know my main man, David. David was literally uh, the eighth son. He gets this word. Samuel is mourning at the time in 1 Samuel chapter 16. He's mourning church, and he's literally trying to find a place to pour his oil. Uh, uh, let me do a little shameless plug. About three weeks ago, my pastor killed a sermon talking about don't waste your oil. Y'all go back on AFBC TV and look at it. But watch this. He's look, looking at this place to begin to pour his oil. Jesse didn't have the oil poured on him. Eliab, the oldest brother, didn't have the oil poured on him. The other six brothers didn't have the oil poured on him. But God said, or Samuel said, is there another son that you have? David comes with his dirty self from the field, and he was probably fighting some bears or some lions at the time. He comes in, and now uh, Samuel is able to get the oil poured on him. You would think that now that David is anointed, you would think that now that David has gotten word that he was supposed to be into the kingdom and into the palace now that now the uh, his father would say look I don't need you going back and getting dirty I don't need you to mess up because now you you I you're going to be our breadwinner you're going to be the one no the next thing that he had to do was he had to go back into the field and stay with the sheep can I tell you another thing that God will often do oftentimes God will give you a promise and God will begin to anoint you into a new place but what he wants to do is he wants to make sure that you are humble enough to be able to maintain the place he's trying to take you. Because what happens oftentimes, Pastor Frankie, is we get so focused on the thing that God has anointed us for that now we're too good. Now we come in asking Pastor to give us water. Now we come in asking for armor bearers. Now we come in expecting so many things. But God wants to know, can you focus on him? Watch this. I got this last example. Y'all remember Jesus, don't you? Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter 3, uh, 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 he gets this where he literally gets baptized uh, uh, from his cousin, John the Baptist. He gets baptized and literally what happens is the heavens begin to open up and as the heavens open up, there's this thunderous voice from God that says that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased and you would think that after that because it's Jesus and because it's Mary's baby and because it's the man, the myth, the legend, Jesus, because it is the son of Joseph. You would think that he wouldn't have to deal with the same pressures that we had to deal with. But it's crazy that in the next chapter, the Bible says that the spirit led him to be tempted. Can I, can I, can I, can I tell you something? Can I, can I encourage you? I know you're not going to believe this, but understand something, church. A lot of the things that you've accredited the devil to, that was God. Okay, y'all didn't like that. Y'all didn't like that. Y'all, we've gotten so used to blaming the devil. Understand, the spirit was the thing that led uh, Jesus to be tempted. And what I saw was that all God was trying to do is, although he already affirmed him, God was trying to ensure that Jesus, even Jesus, had to be prepared. So how much more do you have to be prepared? Uh, watch this. He, you have to understand that God cannot trust what he has not tried. God cannot trust what he has not tried. That's why, I, 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 Pastor Frankie, I stopped getting upset when I had to go through some of the things that I was going through. Honestly, Pastor Frankie, I stopped getting upset. I stopped getting in my feelings. I stopped uh, uh, getting frustrated because I remembered uh, the story of Job, Pastor Frankie. I remember, and all the Lord said was literally, have you considered my servant Job? And uh, the thing that I want to encourage a lot of people watching this morning is I want to encourage you in this way. When the enemy tries you or when you're in a season of preparation, I want you to begin to change your theology and change your question. Don't be so frustrated and say, God, why? But all you have to to begin to ask is, God, have you considered me? God, have you considered? You must have been talking to the enemy about me again because you want me to be prepared. My first point, again, in order to embrace the, 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 the promise, you must endure preparation. And my second thing is uh, uh, the prerequisite for promotion is proper perspective. Uh, I'll say it again. The prerequisite for promotion is proper perspective. I thought you'd like the alliteration, Pastor. Uh, 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 Watch well, this, chapter 3, verse 2, it says this. He says, he did this 
the, he said, the Lord did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience. God did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience. Can I, can I tell you something? True perspective is recognizing that warfare is more about teaching you something than trying to hurt you. What I had to learn and, uh, and really where I had to grow up in God, Pastor Frankie, is I had to mature myself in God because I, was, I felt myself in a transitional statement. I felt myself in a transitional mood. I felt myself moving from one place. And the thing, it, I was struggling even when I was getting ready for this sermon because all I've been in is a season of transition. But the Lord said that you have to begin to shift your perspective. Oftentimes, our struggle is not that we don't love God. It's not that we don't trust God. But our issue is oftentimes, we don't have the proper perspective of God. So we're not able to see him in the right light. We're not able to see him in the right place. That's why when the Bible starts talking about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness, Lord God, and the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, we we get so focused on the humanistic side of it. We get so focused on who hurt us. We get so focused on uh, how, how is it that our father hurt us? How is it that our mother hurt us? How is it that the pastor hurt us? How is it that that person that you gave your life to hurt you. But the thing is, sometimes we have to consider that those things oftentimes isn't even about them, but literally it's God trying to shift our perspective to be able to see him in a new way. That's why we struggled so many times with Pastor Frankie, because uh, uh, we would see in, uh, in the Bible and the gospel so often, literally Jesus would always, uh, Jesus had so many moments. The Bible says in uh, the book of John, it literally says that there were so many miracles that we wouldn't have even been able to write them down. They would fill the earth. But the thing that gets me is that we saw so many moments where God would heal the blind. God had a, he, he had a love, he had a special feeling, he had a special affinity for those that were blind because what I learned was that oftentimes what the enemy will do, the enemy wants to begin to deceive you. All he's ever done is deceive. Uh, John chapter 8 says he's the father of lies and what God will, or what the enemy will do, the enemy will try to lie to you to try to change your perspective of God. Understand, how many times do we curse God? How many times are we frustrated with God? How many times have we been uh, against God simply because we didn't understand what he was trying to get out of our life? Because we've been so focused on the things that God has said. We've been so focused on the way that we feel. We've been so focused on the things that have happened. We've been so focused on what our will is and not what the will of the Lord is. That we would be, we would rather curse the Lord in the seasons where he's trying to prepare us. It reminds me of just years ago when we would remember in Egypt, understand that uh, literally the Egyptians when they were leaving, or excuse me, the Israelites when they were leaving Egypt, they began to curse God because of the fact that they were so frustrated with where the wilderness was and how the wilderness was treating them and how they had to eat manna. I, wanna, uh, I want somebody to come close to the screen. Let me help you for half a second. Understand this. If you don't get anything else from this service, from this message, I want you to get this one thing. Do not go back to Egypt because you're frustrated with your road to the promised land. Okay, I, I want y'all to type it out on the screen. Do not go back to Egypt because you're focused and, or you're frustrated with the road to the promised land. What the Egyptians or what the Israelites did, the Israelites said, look, I'd rather go back to Egypt because although we were in bondage, at least I knew how to maneuver around this bondage. Doesn't that sound familiar? So oftentimes we'll go back into toxic situations. So oftentimes we'll deal with toxic things, not because we know that they're going to be a struggle. We know that they are not healthy for us. We know that they are not good for us. But the issue that we have so often is that we would rather deal with something that is toxic. We would rather deal with something that we know that we can control than be able to grow slow. The issue that I've seen oftentimes is because we're okay with dying slowly. You see, that's the thing about toxins. Toxic things literally will not always kill you immediately, but it will begin to get inside of you. And oftentimes what I've learned is that we've struggled because we've struggled with our perspective because we'd rather deal with Egypt or we'd rather go back to Egypt in so many moments in our life. And we'd rather go back to Egypt than go into the promised land. I'm almost done. Watch this now, the, the, the last point. First thing, in order to embrace the promise, you must endure preparation. Secondly, I need you to understand that the prerequisite for promotion is proper perspective. And lastly, I want you to understand that the proof is in the battle. 
I know that doesn't make much sense to you. Uh, uh, verse three, uh, chapter three, verse one says it like this. These are the nations of the Lord left to test all the Israelites who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. These are the nations that the Lord left to test all of those Israelites who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. Can I tell you what the biggest question is about being a Christian? The, one of the biggest questions that we have is we don't mind trusting God, but we struggle with knowing whether or not God will be faithful. I'm done. I'm done. Understand this. We, we struggle because we don't understand why or we uh, uh, question whether or not God will be faithful. What I've learned, uh, church, and what I've learned honest to, to God is this. I've learned that so often we struggle, and the Israelites had this thing. God had to literally give them a battle, not because of the fact that God wanted to hurt them, not because of the fact that God hated them, not because of the fact that God was trying to punish them, but literally God had to give them a battle simply because so many of them had never seen the faithfulness of God. Remember, the Bible talks about how if you go a few chapters earlier and even in, uh, uh, in Numbers and if you go into Joshua, you understand that these were the sons of the unfaithful. These are literally the ones that uh, some of these people had never been into the wars that Joshua was fighting. So what happens is you're dealing with a generation of people that have never had to trust God with anything. Go back to, uh, to, to my adults, even to some of my kids. Go back to the first time you ever had to really, really trust God. The first time that you ever really had to uh, have your faith tested. It's such a struggle simply because you've never had to deal with that before. And there was no rapport. Can you, uh, uh, can, you, can you understand this thing? I know it'll be hard and I promise I'll get out of your way. But maybe the reason why you're struggling with some of the things that you're struggling with is simply because of the fact that God is trying to give a rapport to himself because he's trying to remind you that he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. But maybe you have not dealt with enough and maybe you have not endured enough to be able to trust him into where he's trying to lead you. Because oftentimes what happens is we don't even have the faith to be able to get to the place that God is trying to sustain us at. And oftentimes what happens is uh, we see that the Lord is in a season or the Lord is trying to put us in a place where he wants us to have to deal with the battle, not because he wants to be able to hurt us, not because he wants us to have to fight, but simply because he wants to be able to show that he's faithful. I want to talk to somebody today that has been struggling because they've been promoted or they've been in a season of transition and they've been wondering, God, why am I in this season? But I want to tell you something that the proof is in the battle. All God's trying to do is God is trying to show you that he is faithful and that he will be there for you. He is the God that fights for us. I'm done. I'm done. I know Pastor Frankie, he'll, he'll, he'll come and he'll uh, uh, do the benediction, but I just want to pray for somebody watching. Father, we say thank you. We love you. We magnify your name. Lord, we honor you for being able to just be who you are. Lord, there's somebody that I was watching today, Lord God, that literally is struggling because they feel as though you've promoted them. They feel as though you've, uh, they've struggled. They feel as though, Lord, they don't know why you have them in the battle that they're in. But, Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you get the glory out of the place that they're in. That, Lord, you show them that the battle that's behind this promotion, Lord God, is going to be the thing that sustains them for the rest of their life. Now, Lord, we just ask that if there's anyone watching who doesn't know God or is still trying to figure out some things and is straight away, Lord, I just ask that you begin to push them back. If they need a church home, let them consider Apex. Lord, but whatever it is, let them turn their hearts back to you. Lord, we love you, we bless you, and we thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. My God, my God, my God, what a word, what a word, what a word. Thank God for that word. Listen, if you enjoyed that word, just put something in our comment section and let us know that you received that word in Jesus' name. But if you listened to that word and, and, and if you heard Minister Clark speaking to your spirit and God operating through him, I want you to do me a favor. Consider giving your life to Christ. Consider it right now. It's a simple thing. All you have to do is repeat after me. Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe in Christ Jesus. And I believe that God raised him from the dead just for me. If you said that out of Romans, congratulations, you are saved. Or if you don't have a church home, I would ask you to consider joining AFBC right now. It's a wonderful thing. We would love to have you. It's a family here. Our vision is to be uh, uh, Christ-centered and community-focused. And we want you to join 
that family. So it's simple. Just uh, let us know in one of our social media platforms in the comment section that you want to join the first, uh, join the church. Give us some contact information, and we will get in contact with you real soon. Or you can fill out the form on our website, and one of us will be reaching out sooner than you think. Amen? Amen. Well, thank God, thank God one more time for that awesome word from Minister Clark. Listen, I know he would appreciate something from him, from you, uh, to him about that word in the comment section, so make sure you send the word to him. But until next week, don't forget, join First Lady and I Friday morning, 7.30 a.m. for our care and concern call. It's our connection call. We want to make sure you're doing okay. We want to hear your praise report, your prayer request, and just connect with you to make sure you're doing all right. If you don't join us for the Friday morning call, don't forget, we still do Bible studies, 7 p.m. or 12 p.m. noon with Dr. Cohen. So join us for one of those services. Or next Sunday, 9.45 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. for our Sunday school service or for our 11 a.m. service where we have a word, and I'll be right back preaching next Sunday. Amen. But until then, from First Lady and I, the First Family, and from our youth pastor, Minister Clark, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from the other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.